It's time to make some deliveries, Sam Porter. Canada's Human in Motion Robotics introduced its ExoMotion, the second ever self-balancing exoskeleton. US clinical trials have already started and Human in Motion Robotics has approval in Canada for a version of its exoskeleton to be used in rehab facilities. Throughout ExoMotion's development, engineers worked to ensure they were building something that was not only functional, but comfortable. It self-balances thanks to a bundle of actuators at the hips, knees, and ankles and sensors to detect shifting positions and the environment. Processors use all the sensor's data to generate the device's next moves. A simple joystick controls walking speed, climbing stairs, sidestepping, sitting, and squatting. The ExoMotion has two batteries on the back that can operate at top speed for two to three hours before needing a recharge and can be hot swapped while the user is wearing the device. The engineers even created a dance mode that allows them to let go of the controller and rely on the sensor to pick up on shifts of the torso to translate them to hip and leg movements. But no word yet on a BB. This is the latest in science news. This is Mind Blow. Say hello to the Goblin Prince. Paleontologists have just discovered a massive Gila monster-like reptile, and its name is straight out of a J.R.R. Tolkien novel. Dubbed Bald Amundol, the name translates to Mound-Headed Goblin Prince in Tolkien's Elvish language. Volg is a great sounding name, it's a goblin prince from The Hobbit, and I think of these lizards as goblin-like, especially looking at their skulls, says Hank Woolley, paleontologist at the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County's Dinosaur Institute. Dating back about 76 million years, Volg's remains were discovered in Utah, and its size is said to have been at least three feet from tip to tail perfect for eating hobbits. This weird new black bubble wrap could make clean drinking water in the desert. Engineers have developed an atmospheric water harvester that works without a power source and it's able to get some water back from the atmosphere. The harvester was tested in California's Death Valley, one of the driest places on Earth, and was able to extract more than 50 milliliters of water that was safe to drink per day. The harvester is made of PVA, lithium chloride, glycerol, and black ink. The team then molded it into bubble wrap shape to increase its surface area for more water collection. The panel was sandwiched between glass panes with a polymer outer film that helped with cooling. It extracted 160 milliliters of water molecules overnight when the humidity was at its highest. During the day, the caught water would warm up and evaporate onto the cool glass surface, and gravity would help the trapped water flow through a system of channels to be collected. The team hopes to make these panels larger to supply more drinking water to areas affected by a lack of safe drinking water which seems good. It's time to give robots jetpacks. The Italian Institute of Technology just introduced Iron Cub 3, the world's first jet-powered flying humanoid robot specifically designed for real-world environments. Work on Iron Cub 3, including flight tests, took about two years, and in the latest experiment, the robot was able to lift off the ground by around 50 centimeters while remaining stable. The Iron Cub 3 integrates four jet engines, two mounted on its arms, and and two on a jetpack on its back. It has a titanium spine and heat-resistant covers for protection. Weighing about 70 kilograms, its turbines can provide a thrust force of more than 1,000 newtons, and its exhaust temperature can reach 700 degrees Celsius. Because of its elongated shape, the team needed to develop advanced flight balance models that considered the robot's limb movements. Equipped with AI-powered control systems, Iron Cub 3 can fly while handling extreme temperatures, high-speed turbulent air flows, and the complex dynamics of multi-body systems. So that is cool. And this is kinda weird. A pair of orcas were just caught French kissing with the incident observed in Norway's Kvjaningen Fjords by citizen scientists. The makeout session lasted around two minutes. During studies of this behavior, there was no aggression found, and scientists say the behavior could simply be a way to maintain social bonds or a form of social grooming like in primates. They also said it could be a type of begging behavior or some kind of game that seems to happen within one cultural group of orcas. So, yeah, now you know that, you're welcome. 
Uh, turns out sea slugs have Mega Man powers. The lettuce sea slug can steal body parts from other organisms and use their powers for itself. It gets its energy from eating algae, separating the algae's photosynthesizing organelles called chloroplasts, and uses them on its back like solar panels to get energy from the sun. Rather than digest the chloroplast, the slug redirects them into small intestinal sacs where they're encased in membranes that the scientists have dubbed kleptosomes, where they're kept alive and functional. They're then moved along to the slug's back where they can use sunlight to help the slug go a longer time without food. I assume they will eventually use all their absorbed powers to defeat Dr. Wily. Here's a new dancing robot. Disney's Amore Research has proposed a multi-objective reinforcement learning framework for robots that trains a single policy on a set of weights that can be selected and tuned, significantly speeding up iteration time, unlike traditional reinforcement learning that relies heavily on a weighted sum of conflicting reward functions. The computational cost of traditional reinforcement learning is tedious and time-intensive, so with its new multi-objective reinforcement learning, workflow is improved and highly dynamic motions can be performed smoothly along with a large spectrum of behaviors and tasks. All of that is to say they've got themselves a very funky robot dancer. And now the amazing Zenith Space Command remote control from 1972. A little louder, a little softer, a channel five. For those who don't have a butler, Zenith suggests Space Command Remote Control. It changes channels. It changes sound levels. It even turns your TV off. Or on. Without wires or batteries. Space Command Remote Control is available in a full range of screen sizes. And it's now standard equipment in the new Zenith Space Command line. Channel 2. louder. At Zenith, the quality goes in before the name goes on.